I'm going to share my experience of what data science means in various companies, where I worked and where I interviewed for, and I'm going to talk about various different roles and aspects when it comes to working with data. When I'm talking about data in a company, I'm going to talk about the data from the perspective of a company that has, for example, an application as their product. So they have a mobile application which users can download from App Store or Google Play, and then they can use it for certain benefits. Maybe there are some features that they like that are useful in their life. And um, when it comes to data, the company would also track how users use their app. So they would know how many downloads they have, how many users logged in, how many users um, started using certain features for how long and so on. This information is usually used to improve the product and understand where are the drop-off points, what do users not like when they interact with a certain application, uh, how can they improve it, do certain like experimentation and A-B testing and so on. Imagine the hypothetical company that I'm going to talk about has this kind of data in their type, some kind of storage that they have. Maybe it's Google Cloud Platform or Amazon or whatnot. How can they get the benefit from having that data and how can they access that? So first and foremost, to take advantage of having some data from the product that you have, you need to be able to store it and access it somehow. So someone has to build the infrastructure around this and usually that would be data warehouse team. So a data warehouse engineer would um, define how they want to store the data, evaluating certain criteria, what kind of product would they want to use, do they want to have something internal, do they want to use like cloud services like Google Cloud um, services or um, AWS and they would have to build the pipelines where the data comes from the application servers to the Google Cloud platform and then getting stored there and then can be accessed easily in a nice way by people who will actually do analytics based on that data. Very often this role is kind of intertwined with the data scientist role and in smaller companies, especially if it's a startup, usually people want to hire someone who can do everything. So they would require you not only to have statistical knowledge, data science skills, analytical skills, but also understand how the small, how can you build a pipeline? How can you um, store the data? How can you access the data? How can you schedule daily data jobs and so on? The person that applies for a data warehouse position is usually expected to actually have very good software engineering skills an ability to work with uh, big software engineering teams, contribute to certain code uh, structures, contribute to certain products that they have. They need to know how to clean, how to process, and how to store data in the most efficient and uh, consumable way by their final stakeholders. And they are usually responsible for building tech and tools that support the work of data scientists or product analysts in the future. So if you are a more product-related data scientist uh, or product analyst, you are going to be working very closely with data warehouse engineers. A similar role that can be both in the same team as a data warehouse engineer, but sometimes, depending on the size of the company, it can be in a standalone team, is someone who works in business intelligence. So it would be, for example, a business intelligence developer that will work on like building different dashboards with certain levels of granularity using tools like Looker or Tableau to have um, data presented in a way that a lot of people can consume it and interact with it very easily. So someone who has no data science or analytics background can just go to this dashboard, look at it, derive some learning and make decisions in their work better. Also not a super common role in the smaller companies. Again, more of a data science role would be expected to do things like that. But if the company is big enough or if there's a strong need to have like this very well built uh, dashboards in external tools, then there will be a um, space for a business intelligence engineer. But what if the company doesn't know yet how they want to evaluate the performance of their products? What if there are no defined metrics, the product is so new that there is no clear way to decide like this is what we want to build the dashboard based on. In this case, this is where the role of decision scientist or often called data scientist, data analyst or product analyst comes into place. Those roles sometimes have different uh, needs in their skill sets, but I'm going to talk about this a bit later. Right now, let's focus on what is the decision scientist and what do they do in the company. Like This is the role that's closest to me because that's what I've been doing at King when I worked on Candy Crush or now at Ting where I work on our B2B products. And the role is really defined by interacting with a lot of people and deciding how are you going to measure the success of a certain feature, of a certain product.
product, of the certain API that you're building in the company and so on. So as a decision scientist, you are required to have one of the most widest uh, skill sets that's possible. You need to be able not only to um, have a certain level of software engineering skills, you need to know how to code a little bit, not necessarily in a fantastic way that is sustainable, but you have to be able to work with those tools and read code. You need to know how to extract data from databases, so you need to know SQL, um, you need to know uh, statistics very well because that's how you're going to derive most of the learnings from the information that you receive from databases. But the most common and actually one of the hardest skills to get, especially as a just starting and beginning data scientist, is um, the product understanding. When you're working as someone who defines how we're going to measure the success of the products and helping various stakeholders that have very different interests and very different parts of the product to understand better what is happening with their with the product that they built, you really need to know what you're working on. And it's very hard because sometimes it can be something that you're completely not interested in or something that you are very far from. And this is actually one of the most fun parts of the job because you get to find out so much and so deep about certain products. But this is a really, really hard skill that's um, actually going to give you a very strong competitive advantage because not a lot of people that like doing analytics and like doing data science are very interested in the core products that they're working with. And if you are knowing down to like very nitty gritty details, what is the product, how users interact with them, but also how does it work from like the technical perspective, this is gonna be a very strong point towards you when you are applying for jobs or where you're just working and want to like progress in your career. Another non-trivial or non-obvious uh, skill that uh, decision scientists need to have is stakeholder management. This is also a super critical one because programming you can learn, SQL you can learn, statistics you can learn, but talking to people is really hard. And especially with people that are not sure what they want when it comes to data. So in both of my roles, um, I had to work a lot with various stakeholders, with various levels of um, technical understanding. So from like software developers, um, game artists, game developers, to managers, product owners, and so on. And for all of them, I needed to be able to present the data in a way that's the most understandable and most useful for them. And not only kind of deliver the results that I found based on like some analysis that I did, but also make sure that they understand what could be done. So when they think about their product, they can start getting curious and start figuring out what other new things would be relevant for them to know in their work. And as well as like stakeholder management skills, as a decision scientist, you really need very strong product management skills, not necessarily in the roles when you're like more junior. So when you're just starting off, you're going to be learning a lot. You're going to receive hopefully some guidance from your manager or your peers. But when you're growing and in your product analyst or data scientist role, project management becomes insanely crucial. You have so many dependencies on the people who build tracking and the build the product, so on the software engineers, as well as the stakeholders that expect you to deliver um, certain metrics, certain learnings, dashboards, reports, whatnot. So being able to just like tie all those different pieces together, developer building certain tracking that you need to deliver a report to senior leadership in a month uh, is something that's uh, also not super trivial. It's also very exciting. It's not necessarily fun for people that are there in data science for research and hardcore analytics, like applying statistics, building models. But those people that are more interested in like analytics, statistics, machine learning, um, building models, they're on the other side of the spectrum usually more. So first thing that comes to mind uh, is a machine learning engineer or a machine learning data scientist, someone who takes all the data that I already talked about, like all the user interactions, for example, with an app and defines what do we want to improve in this app? For example, we want to improve, let's say, I don't know, retention of our users. Then they build models based on the data that we have that are continuously improving the application in the future. For that, they need to extract the data of user interaction with an app, um, decide what they want to improve, decide how to measure that. Um, decide which kind of algorithm or model they want to use it, build it, 
and in many cases actually built it in a way that's good enough to put it like in production so it can be used real time by all the users of the app but in some cases there can be also like a software engineering team that actually realizes the models that the machine learning team builds um, in the bigger companies usually but if you're interested in both in decision science and machine learning being both on the side of the product but also building cool algorithms and um, cool machine learning models that you can put in production there is a another role for you and it's a research scientist research scientist is usually the role that requires the most qualifications those are the ones that are required to have phd in statistics or computer science or mathematics or even physics sometimes um, those are the people that are required to be worked with research for many years to know how to write paper publish papers how to manage um, manage projects where the outcome is unclear, where it's literally just a research project. And it can be a super fun job where you're like both on the side of the product trying to come up with something that's going to be useful, that's going to change the product, that can be very innovative and very cool, but also at the same time on the side of doing coding, experimenting, doing software engineering, building models, putting them in production or creating proof of concept and so on. If you want to apply for a role like this, you should be ready that your technical, statistical and project management skills and research oriented skills will be evaluated very well. You should be also ready that a lot of your work won't actually make it into the product. So a lot of the research that you, that you will do might just like, go in the table and be there for a long time. So you won't necessarily see the impact of the things that you're doing right away as compared to a decision scientist or machine learning engineer. And it's something that is hard to deal with for some people. So it might not be the best uh, fit for someone who really wants to see the impact right away. In that case, I do recommend going to the decision scientist role or working with experiments like A-B testing where you can see the impact of the decisions you make right away. So hopefully this was useful and made a little bit clearer what are the common roles when it comes to like data in the companies. Um, of course, it's not an exhaustive list and I didn't go into details around what specific skills you need every single role or um, what are what are the requirements in various types of companies or sizes of companies. Of course, like Google is very different from a certain startup. So please, if you think that this information will be useful for you or if you have any questions, write me comments. I'm going to try to answer them and I'm going to try to combine them in the future videos. So good luck looking for your next data science role and uh, have a nice day.